Making a bar chart with React and D3. Our goal here is to reproduce this bar chart using React and D3. The data that we'd like to visualize is the United Nations World Population Prospects dataset. This dataset contains the population of each country. I'll download this Excel spreadsheet here. This dataset has regions, subregions, and areas, along with their total population from year 1950 all the way to 2020. What I'm really interested in is the most populous countries. I'm going to try to isolate the countries by sorting by type. Then I'll delete the rows we're not interested in. I'll delete the rows for everything that's not a country. Delete rows. Now that we just have countries, we can sort by the population in 2020. All right, now they're in sorted order. And we can see the most populous countries are India, China, US, Indonesia, Pakistan, Brazil. I'm going to delete the columns that we're not really interested in. And then I'll rename this column country. And now export to CSV. I'll call it UN population 2019.csv. I'm noticing that this number formatting is a bit off though, and that's going to cause trouble later on when we try to parse this. So what I can do is select all of these numbers and then say format number number. And now they're formatted like this. Having these commas in there could be problematic, so I think I can just remove the thousands separator. There we go. This is nice clean stuff that we'd like to have in our CSV file. So I'll export again as UN population 2019.csv. And then I'll make a new gist called United Nations World Population Prospects 2019. And the file will be called UN population 2019.csv. Then I'll open this file with the text editor. Control A to select all and then Control C to copy. And then I'll paste it right in here. And then create public gist. I'll also edit this to add a file called readme.md. This is the United Nations World Population Prospect 2019 dataset and it links to the original source cleaned and formatted as CSV. Update public gist. All right, now we can get at this raw URL, which I will copy for use in our visualization. To start making this bar chart, I'm going to fork this example here. And then for the CSV URL, I'm going to paste that new URL that loads our United Nations data. Next, I'm going to clear out the things we don't need, like center x, center y, and pi arc. Let's keep all this logic around loading data. But when it comes to rendering the data, we don't need this pi generator. And our goal is to make a bar chart. So for now, let's get rid of all this stuff. And we want to make one rectangle for each element of the data. So we can say data.map and take each row D and turn it into an SVG rect. With SVG rects, we need to define x, y, width, and height. I'm thinking of actually making a horizontal bar chart. And so the x position of our bars will always be 0. They're going to start from the left. They're going to sort of grow from the left to the right. The y position of our bars from top to bottom, these should be determined by the different countries. To figure out the y position, we need to use a construction called a scale. What we need to use here is a band scale. This scale will take values from so-called 
data space, also known as our domain. In this diagram, it's A, B, and C, but in our case of the data, it'll be the countries, the country names. And this band scale will take those country names as input and return things in screen space, or the range of the scale, that we can use to position our bars. In general, band scales are useful for ordinal attributes. For Y, we need to use a band scale. So first of all, what we can do is import scale band from D3. And then before we render our rectangles, we can set up this scale. Const Y scale equals scale band. This here invokes the scale band constructor, which gives us a new instance of a band scale. We can use method chaining to set the domain and the range. The domain of this scale is going to be all of our country names. So to get at those country names, we can say data.map, a function that takes as input D, one of our rows, and returns the country name from that row. I think it was d.country, but just to make sure, I can say console.log, data at index zero, to just have a look at one of our rows. We've got these columns for every year, and we also have a country, uppercase C, column. That's exactly what I thought it would be. All right, we've set the domain for the Y scale. Now we need to set the range. The range is the pixel space coordinates that the domain will be mapped onto. It accepts an array that has two values, the minimum and the maximum. So the minimum will be zero, and the maximum, since it's the Y scale, which goes up and down, will be height. This will make our bars spread all the way across from top to bottom. Now that we've constructed this Y scale, we can use it to set the Y position of our bars. We can say Y equals Y scale of D dot country. We're not seeing anything because we still need to define width and height. The width of our bars is going to be driven by the population of each country in 2020. To figure out the widths of our bars, we can use a construct called a linear scale. This diagram by Sebastian Guterres, I think, explains the notion of a linear scale pretty well. The domain of the linear scale is two numbers, a minimum and a maximum. And this is from your data space. These are going to be, for example, the minimum and maximum population values. Or in the case of a bar chart, we want to really have a zero baseline. So the domain will start at zero and go to the maximum population value. The range of a linear scale also has a minimum and maximum, and these are numbers. This is our screen space. If we want our bars to go all the way across the screen horizontally, the range would start at zero, and the maximum of the range would be our width. To use linear scales, the first thing we need to do is import scale linear from D3, like this, and then before we render our bars, we can construct an instance of this scale. Const x scale equals scale linear. We can set the domain of this scale to go from zero to the maximum population for 2020. Let's take another look at our first row of data. We've got columns for every year. So if we scroll down, we can see that there's one column for 2020, which is what we're after. Unfortunately, these are all strings, but we're going to need to deal with these as numbers. And we're really only interested in the 2020 population right now. So before we go any further, I think I will derive a new column just called population. And that's going to be the population for 2020 but not as a string, as a number instead. I'll comment out this logic for now and come back to it later. At the time when we load the data, we can pass a second argument ca called row to d3.csv. 
And this row function takes as input one row, and we need to return that same row, but we can do some modifications here. For example, I can create a new column called d.population. I'll make it uppercase just to go along with country. And this can be assigned to be d at 2020. And by the way, I can't say d.2020 because that sort of goes against the rules of JavaScript. But as an alternative, we can say d at the string 2020. The value returned here is a string. And to convert it into a number, we can say parse float. This built-in function parses numbers from strings. But as a simpler way, we can use the unary plus operator. They pretty much do the same thing. And this is a more popular or conventional way to do it. All right, so now we should have population as a number for all of our rows. Let's take another look at our first row just to confirm that it's actually there. All right, there it is, population. And because it's not in quotes, that's how we know that it's actually a number that's been parsed. Now we can use that to compute the maximum population. And we need the maximum population as the maximum value for our x scale domain. D3 provides a utility called max. To use max, the first argument we pass in is the data array. And the second argument is an accessor function that takes as input d, one of our rows, and returns, in our case, d.population. This will compare the population values across all rows, and it will return the maximum of those. Now we need to set the range for our x scale. Our bars should go from 0 to width, because they're going horizontally. And that's our range for our x scale. Now we can use the x scale to compute our width. The width here can be x scale, and we can pass in d dot population. And I'll just reformat that. This should give us the correct width for our bars. The last thing that we need is the height of our bars. Band scales actually provide this thing called band width. Band width of the scale is the width of one bar. Since y scale is our band scale, we can set the height to be y scale dot band width. And we have to invoke it as a function. All right, our bars should be showing up, but they're not. Let's see what the errors are. Oh, max is not defined. Max we're using here, but I forgot to import it from D3. So we can import it like this. And now we have a bar chart that shows the population of all countries. I'd really only like to show the top, say, 10 of these. Otherwise, the labels are definitely not going to fit. We can do this by filtering the data before passing it into set data. I can make a function here that takes as input data. Before passing the data into set data, we can do some modifications, like only take the first 10 rows. I think we can use data.slice to do that. But just as a sanity check, let me uh, test out something. Let's say data is 1, 2, 3, 4. I want to test out what slice does exactly. If you type data.slice into the console here, it says, OK, the first argument is start, and the second argument is end. So I want to go from 0 to, uh, let's say, 2 in this test case. OK, so that'll just give us the first two. So what I want to do is take the top 10. So we can say 0 is the start, and 10 is the end. Now we only have 10 bars. All right, so far so good. Now we just need to add some axes.